Hi, my name is Monica and today I'm going to be talking about something that's very personal. And that is my biggest fears when I was seriously considering pursuing medicine or becoming a doctor. I never really thought that I would talk about this on a public platform, even though I've had these conversations in my head like a hundred times. Quite frankly, like I want to be as honest and transparent on this platform as possible because I want it to be very helpful to someone else. I want it to be very real. I think sometimes we have these rose-colored lenses about becoming a doctor and medical school and, you know, never having doubts and knowing that you wanted to do this since you were at the age of three or five or whatever and one that was never the case for me i think when i was little i wanted to be a lawyer i went into college as a chinese major i worked in biotechnology and pharmaceuticals when i graduated college so this is you know my journey is not traditional and i think more and more people have this journey and this story but it's so important to talk about the reality of it to talk about what it means to be actually a human and a person going through this process and pursuing this field. So let's just take a deep dive into my journal. And by journal, I mean my phone, where I wrote down my biggest fears when I was thinking about medical school. But let's talk about it and let's talk about how I overcame these fears. Number one, age. Age was, for some strange reason, such a huge fear for me. And I think part of it is like society telling you that by 30, you need to have everything figured out. I'm 25 when I start medical school and I'm going to graduate when I'm 29 which means I'm not going to have like a real big girl doctor job until I'm 29. And even though I've gotten to this point where I've talked to a lot of people and I know that my story is honestly like the average, like the average age of medical school matriculants is 25, 26. Um, and, and there are people older than me in medical school. I mean, there are people with like career, like real career changes and who have families and stuff. And they're perfectly fine and they're succeeding and they're thriving. But like, three years ago, P-Size Brain did not know this. And so I was very, very afraid. The other part too is that by 29, a lot of my friends are going to be relatively settled in their life. Like they might have families and kids and be settled in their careers and know exactly what the next, you know, 20 years, 30, 40, 50 years of their life is going to look like. And I'm just going to be starting to be an adult. So that's also scary, you know, to not be at the same level or like not to be going through the same things as the other people in your life or the people that you've known forever and you've kind of done all the things with. It was really scary for me. Number two, money. And this is a little controversial because anytime I talk about money with people and they know that I'm going to be a doctor and I'm going to go to medical school, everyone's like, oh, you'll pay it off, like all the debt, like it's fine. Like, don't worry about it. But you know, I've been working since I was 16 and I've had a regular paycheck hit my bank account pretty much every two weeks since I was 16 years old. Like there might have been breaks here and there, but for the most part, you know, I was employed or looking for a job. So to voluntarily agree to not have money and a paycheck coming in for four years of my life, especially like, you know, as an adult, like from 25 to 29 years of age is terrifying. I'm also very financially independent from my parents. So again, the idea of not being able to kind of stand on my own two feet and pay my bills and take money out of borrowed money, which is loans, is scary to me. It terrifies me to my core. Number three, this career is challenging. And this was something I struggled with in a very interesting way because part of me was like, I love the struggle, like I love the challenge, give me more. And then the other kind of maybe a little more rational part of my brain was like, it's a lot, you know, like it took so much to get to even this point. And I'm not even, you know, I haven't even started medical school. I had to do four years of undergrad. Uh, I had to take the MCAT. I did a post -bac program. I worked, I got hundreds of hours of extracurriculars and clinical activities. And that was just to get into medical school. And so it doesn't even compare to the years of work and effort that I'm going to have to put in for, you know, the next however many years of my life. So I talked a lot about my fears and I talked about everything that scared me and continues to scare me. But here's the one thing that I think always ends up making me feel a lot better about a lot of these fears and it's this idea of the time is going to pass by anyways so one of my favorite quotes out there talks about this idea of you know you're free to do this for your thing because you're going to be 29 and that's really late because of whatever reasons that you have come up with but 
the time is going to pass by anyways. The four years is going to go by anyways. You're going to be 29 regardless of what you choose to do. So don't you want to spend that time doing something that motivates you, something that excites you, something that makes you kind of spring out of bed in the morning? Um, and that really changes the entire conversation in my brain around all these fears that I have. I also think about what this field means and what I get to do in this field. The fact that I can specialize, the fact that I can, you know, cater a field around my own interests and be on the forefront of technology and innovation and get to work with my hands and the impact that I can make on people and their lives, it always puts things in perspective. I always get kind of like a different look from what like my primitive scared little brain is trying to tell me and the more that i learn about this field the more i develop a greater appreciation for the the role that doctors play not just you know in their interactions with people and patients but in our society at large the fact that they can make such an impact in moving forward our understanding of the human body and different diseases and actually saving lives that motivates me so this is what i have to offer you i think it's so normal to have doubts it's so normal to have these fears but it's how you deal with those fears that matter is there a voice in your head that kind of ends up countering those fears is there a voice that's louder than the voice of those fears is there kind of a gut feeling that you get or the fluttering in your heart that you get when you think about what you're going to be able to do um as a doctor and in or as you know, whatever field that you want to pursue. And no one can make that decision for you. Any time that you have doubts, is there another louder voice in your head kind of calming those doubts and calming those fears and telling you that it's all worth it? Listen to that voice. So for me, you know, I know that I have doubts and I have fears and I know that this is going to be a very challenging field in a lot of ways, but I also know that I get to learn some of the coolest things that are out there and I get to work with some of the most hardworking people who are so motivating and so inspiring and just get to be a part of a really challenging but really really cool field. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope that this was inspiring or in some way motivating or even if it gave you an insight into how my brain works, how I think, how I calm down my fears. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, make sure you follow me on Instagram and I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Bye! Talk to me.